Hey everyone, welcome back to the Miser's Guide to Ebony. In this video, I'm going to take a deeper look at champions. I'll talk about their purpose and how to get them, how to upgrade them, and what rewards you'll get for doing so, and I'll go through the current champions and discuss priorities a bit. First, a word from this video's sponsor. App Gallery provides competitive discounts on your Ebony spending. App Gallery is available to all Android and emulator users. When you sign up for App Gallery, make sure you set your country in App Gallery to a European country. Mine is set to the United Kingdom, but any European country should work. Special note to Canadians, if you have your country set to Canada, you'll need to make this region change in App Gallery or the discount campaigns will no longer work for you. In addition to the App Gallery campaigns, there's also a VIP program for larger spenders that offer even higher discounts. Check the video description for details on how to download App Gallery and set it up. You should also consider joining the App Gallery Discord group to get support and more promotional information. There are usually multiple promotions within each campaign where users can obtain coupons for direct discounts on their spending. Often the coupons are stackable and the discounts can get higher than other app stores. Check out the video description for details on the current offerings. Thank you App Gallery for sponsoring this video and providing discounts to Evany players. There are currently six champions in the game with more likely to be added in the future. You can access the champions menu by clicking the heart on your castle. To obtain champions, you can obtain champions tokens passively through normal gameplay when the champion event comes up, and you'll be able to redeem for the items that unlock your champion. There are three means to upgrade the champions that you've unlocked. First, we have the greeting option. You can greet 10 times per day. Each time you greet a champion, you get a very irritating one minute cooldown, which honestly shouldn't be there. Go to the world map and back to bypass the cooldown and continue greeting. The cooldown is just one of those annoying things that should be removed, but it's there, so we're stuck with it for now. The next method to increase your champion's loyalty level is by empowering. This option doesn't have a button. Simply bring out your inner creep and touch your champion somewhere on their body up to 15 times per day. The final method to increasing your champion loyalty is by offering gifts. This can be done by clicking the loyalty heart at the top right. A meager amount of gifts are obtained through monsters, bosses, and resource bots, but the most significant source is, of course, through packages. A nice trick here is to hold down the send gift button to quickly hand out all your gifts rather than repeatedly pressing the button. When your champion increases in loyalty level, you'll be able to claim gems, general tokens, blood of Ares, and runestone chests. At certain levels, you'll also unlock some of the champion's background story for a bit more rewards. Far more importantly, upgrading loyalty levels also grants you permanent buffs and debuffs that affect your kingdom. Let's take a look at the champions and their skills. First, we can take a look at Helen. Helen's first skill at max increases reinforcement capacity by 100%. The second skill decreases enemy troop attack by 20%, so this would affect all enemy troops. Helen's third skill increases your in-city troop defense and HP by 40%, so that will work for all troop types. And similarly, the fourth skill at max increases in-city troop attack, all troops, by 40%. Next, we take a look at Elizabeth. Elizabeth's first skill increases in-city ranged and siege defense and HP by 60% at the max. The second skill reduces enemy ground and mounted attack by 40%. In server versus server, you have the single revive troop power that can be increased by 50% with the third skill. And the fourth skill of Elizabeth will increase your in-city ranged attack by 80% at the max. The third champion is Ariadne. Her first skill increases in-city ground and mounted defense and HP by 60%. Her second skill reduces enemy ranged and siege HP by 40%. The third skill is pretty similar, reducing enemy ranged and siege defense by 40%. And the fourth skill increases in-city ground attack by 80%. The fourth champion, Dulcinea, increases in-city troop attack by 40% with the first skill. The second skill reduces enemy ground and mounted HP by 40%. The 
The third skill is similar to Elizabeth's third skill where you have the single troop revive power in server as a server. It's increased by 50%. And then the fourth skill increases in-city mounted defense by 80%. Next, we have Esmeralda. Her first skill increases in-city ground and mounted defense and HP by 60%. The second skill reduces enemy ranged and siege attack by 40%. The third skill is the only monster unique skill out of all the champions. It increases your troop attack against monsters by 60%. And the fourth skill increases your in-city mounted attack by 80%. Josephine is currently the most recent champion that is available in the game. Her first skill increases in rally mounted attack by 60%. So that would work on bosses. If you're doing a rally against a boss, for example, um, it would increase your mounted attack. The second skill, enemy ground and mounted HP receive a reduction of 40%. The third skill increases your march speed by 30%. And the fourth skill is a little bit better than that first one. We have in rally troop attack, so all troops get an increase of 40% when you are attacking in a rally. The priorities for upgrading your champion will differ based on your different kingdom goals, but there are some considerations that you can make to decide on what your focus should be. The first thing to keep in mind is that the unlocks don't happen in a straightforward manner. For example, you won't be unlocking the fourth champion skill until you've reached loyalty 10. In some cases, putting in the time to pump up the lower skills of a new general won't be as effective as just dumping into one of your older champions that is primed for a good upgrade, even if it will take you more time to unlock. Yes, they take longer, but the increases at a higher loyalty level are far more substantial. One of the more recent changes to champions is the addition of skins. There aren't too many in the game at the moment, Helen has two, and Elizabeth has one. Helen's first skill is fairly easy to acquire with a requirement of Keep 30 and Loyalty Level 15. It gives a 5% boost to hospital capacity, and if she's wearing the skimpy Queen of Sparta lingerie, she will also give a 5% bonus to in-city troop and siege attack. The second Helen skin is a Purchase skin, which grants 10% reinforcing ranged and siege HP, and if she's wearing the skin, you'll get a 2% march size capacity and a 5% to marching ranged attack. Elizabeth's one skill requires loyalty 15 and for your server to win a server war with you obtaining 540 million or more points. The skin grants 20% archer tower attack. And if she's wearing it, a 5% reduction to enemy ground and mounted HP. Skin bonuses aren't huge, but they may change your priorities slightly if you have access to one. Finally, the largest factor in choosing a priority is your own kingdom. Are you focusing on your debuffs, in-city buffs, rally attacks, monsters? Your individual focus areas are what should drive your champion loyalty and not what the biggest players are doing. For example, I'm way behind in champions in comparison to players that regularly buy packs and can dump items for points. My focus champion has been Helen, partially because she was my first champion and therefore most developed, but also because I value her in-city buffs. For the same reason, I brought up my loyalty for Elizabeth Ariadne and Dulcinea to grab some more defensive boosts. I'll probably finish off my Helen and then I'll have decisions to make on where to go next. Should I push Elizabeth knowing that I'll get plenty of useful in-city range attack fairly soon, as well as some much needed ranged and siege defense and HP? Should I instead work on buffing my ground defense with Ariadne, maybe mounted defense with Dulcinea? Or do I want to unlock Josephine for some more bonuses to rally attack? There are a lot of options, but I'll likely go with pushing my Elizabeth for a while. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you liked what you saw, please consider hitting the like button and checking out other videos on the Miser's Guide to Ebony. I'll see you in the next video.